Hi, I'm Andrew Sheridan, cloud technologist here at NetSuite. And I'm joined here today by Kerry Vehu from Bright, as well as Jim Calabrese from Final Sight. Today, we're here to talk about Sweet People HR. And if you've caught the, any of our previous sessions or even today's keynote, you might be aware that of Sweet People. So it is a full HR information system that's built into the NetSuite platform. And it's got capabilities for workforce management, for payroll, and for performance management. Um, we'll get into what these mean for you and your company in a little bit more detail but you don't want to hear it from me. You want to hear it from the people who are living it every day. So why don't you introduce yourselves. Carrie? Hi, I'm Carrie Vahieu. Uh, I'm current the controller and HR director at Bright. Uh, I currently do all things finance as well as human resources. And Jim? Hi, Jim Calabrese. I'm from Final Sight, uh, the chief financial officer. I've uh, been a software CFO since the late 90s. Um, you know, I, I currently run uh, both CF, uh, both finance and HR. Okay, so you are both wearing both hats within your organization. Yes. That's correct. And would you say that's that's pretty common in smaller companies? Yeah, we find that it is a lot more common than you actually would think. That you know, human resources does fall under the the accounting side of the business. Interesting. So let's get right into the meat of it. You both evaluated HR solutions. You clearly, uh, are, there was an articulated need within the company. Why did you decide to go to NetSuite for your HR needs? Uh, so we decided because we needed a scalable platform um, that was a single view into our business data. Uh, we had started with no HR system. We were using spreadsheets and Word documents, um, and we wanted to make more out of our system. Uh, we wanted time off tracking, we wanted performance metrics, we wanted performance reviews all in one system that we had to, instead of using Excel in Word, that we were able to see all that information and how that side of the business was doing. Okay, a lot of that has uh, financial implications as well, right? Yes. And how about yourself, Jim? Yeah, so we had been using Intac for a few years and it had sort of run its course with our organization. So we needed to come up with a new solution and so what we did is when we moved to the NetSuite ERP system, we also moved to the Suite People application. And from a sort of a total cost perspective, we replaced Intact and ADP, and basically it cost about the same amount of money. So for us, it was an economic decision. We got a significant enhancement on the ERP side, and we got a lot of the same functionality that we used and that we were using in ADP. Nice. And when we were talking earlier, you mentioned that there were certain things that you really wanted to sync up between the two systems. Like I think you mentioned org structures, approvals. Yeah, so one of the things that we did on the ERP side is we used a lot of uh, advanced approvals and workflow to route you know, purchase orders, employee expenses, and vendor bills. And all of that leverages sort of the HR structure in, in NetSuite Suite People. So instead of us having, you know, which happens in a lot of finance organizations, you have to recreate sort of the org chart in your finance system as well as your HR system. We got the advantage of having those two things combined. And for us, it's really a seamless, we put in a transaction, it just routes through the organization and sort of goes to the right places for approvals, et cetera. So for us, that was fantastic. That's great. And I have to imagine, I know both of your companies are in growth mode. There's gonna be a lot of changes on that, uh, on that front. It's yeah. a lot to think. Yeah. Awesome. So one thing that I think we want people to know about Sweet People today is it's not just the core HR. It's not just tracking your, your employee database, although, of course, there's that element. There's also uh, performance management, which you're both leveraging right now. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. And so... Jim, what was the driver for going for performance in NetSuite from a financial perspective? So what we found in the traditional sort of performance management structure, right, the manager would sit down and, and sort of delegate their performance reviews with the staff, and it wasn't a completely uh, interactive session between employee and manager. So with the new performance management structure, the employee sort of took more ownership in terms of their development and their performance. And what we experienced in year one of the new solution is we had like 95, 96% compliance with the employees really driving the process. And yep. for us, that was a record. 
um, the highest that we had ever gotten really early in the process. And what, what we actually found through the process is the employees are very serious about their, you know, the development in the organization and their and working with their manager on how best to perform for the organization. And it sort of gave us some secondary tasks in terms of now we need to sort of get the right tools to our managers to sort of work with the employees to help them be successful. Mm. It sounds like that's the sort of process that almost has to be bottom up if you're going to get honest feedback. Uh, absolutely. I mean, and, and, and the employees really took to it, which was great. So, you know, they're doing goal setting, they're doing sort of then their, their uh, mid-season reviews with their managers, and, and the process has been pretty iterative. So it's been great. That's great. And Carrie, you mentioned you're using performance management, but also using performance metrics, right? Yeah, so we uh, took on the performance metrics as part of our goals. Uh, we currently use all the NetSuite versions of the performance metrics. Awesome. But we also added gross profit, gross profit percent, and named account revenue as a way of tracking our sales performance. Um, we made our compensation structure based off of that, which was awesome that we could actually see that in real time throughout the year. Awesome. And for those of you who don't know, performance metrics are really one of the key differentiators of sweet people, I feel, our performance uh, offering, because it, it allows you to capture virtually any data that's flowing through NetSuite, and that might be on revenue, it might be on sales. If your people are accounting folks, it's uh, days to close, it might be support cases close. Anything that's running through NetSuite can be tagged as a performance metric and applied against these goals, Yeah. right? And so it sounds like you're doing revenue and gross profit percentage. So these aren't just individual goals. These are company goals, right? Yeah, so these all tie into our budgets that we make at the end of the year. Uh, we can pull all this data and figure out exactly where our salespeople are and where they should be for the next year, which actually helps you know, with the overall bright goals and objectives along with the financial side of the budgets. Okay. And Jim, is that, you mentioned that's something you'd be looking at as well, the metrics, right? Yeah, we've been, so we're a little bit more sort of, you know, disaggregated from a system perspective where a lot of our sales stuff is in Salesforce and our project work is in Mavenlink. Okay. So, you know, so we're not sort of pulling in the KPIs to date, but we are, we are leveraging sort of the interactive process between the employees and the managers. For us, that was, for us, that was a big step forward in terms of really starting to drive performance into the organization. Okay, yeah. So we've talked about, you know, instituting some connection in terms of some specific KPIs moving forward, but we're still at the conceptual stage and really haven't started to nail down how to get that into the, the performance management system. Gotcha, so in that example, if either you were using NetSuite's project management capabilities or our CRM, or you had those, that data integrated back in, it might provide a little better of a, a managerial pipeline. That's correct, yeah. yeah, right now we're not at the point of being able to pull that information in readily, yeah. Cool. Um, so, one other topic I wanted to talk about was payroll. And so, this is really one of the three pillars of the Sweet People offering. There's the core HR, the database, the time off management, as you've mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, and there's the performance and there's payroll. And Jim, you're running payroll in NetSuite as That's well. That's correct, yes. So, how has that experience been? So, you know, like we were, again, we were on ADP before, you know, we, you know, we definitely, from my seat, right, I mean, I think the one thing that I see that we couldn't do in ADP, ADP, you know, to get a summary of what was going on from a payroll perspective, it was basically like 80 pages, and there were all these little ADP acronyms in terms of what was salary and what was commissions and what was deductions, and we're able to, in sort of a very simple, sort of like one page snapshot, easily view salary data, withholdings, 401k, 401k match, and a lot of variety of sort of, you know, just payroll information in one sort of easy to use columnar spreadsheet. So for me, the view is, is super easy. It's easy for us to do comparisons between pay periods to see quickly what's changed. You know, so, and, and that's been fantastic. And I actually just, I don't know if you both caught this at today's um, keynote, but as part of our fall NetSuite release, we're instituting more capabilities around 401ks. So yeah, so we, we actually implemented the, the new solution in terms of doing the match calculation. Really? Uh, doing the catch-up calculations for those that are 50 and above, 
and you know, prior to that release, it was pretty manual. And now, literally, it's you know, it's a, it's a complete box that is no longer being managed by the finance team. Awesome. So for us, that that's been a huge savings, and it's really been a great modification to the application. And this payroll data flows right to the GL, right? Absolutely, yeah. That's another thing that we never worry about anymore because it just populates, you know, by function. And we're, you know, we share the, you know, we share a lot of the ERP structural things with our sort of our payroll setup. So, you know, we have one set of GL accounts. It's used by all the same departments, and we do our income statements sort of by department. So it's it's very easy to see how things, you know, sort of map into the financials, and it's been great. Yeah. And Carrie, you're not using uh, payroll currently, right? No. But you are using um, some of the other linkages between HR and finance. Like you talked to me before about uh, time off. Yes. So we are using the time off request. We do use the time tracking. And we also use expenses in NetSuite. Uh, the difference is, is that we don't have the payroll system. So we manually have to take all the data out of NetSuite and put it into our payroll system. And how's that, how's that set up working? Um, it struggles. You know, you have the element of human error during that time. Um, it's constant, you know, you take it out, but you also have to bring it back in. So once payroll's finished, you still have to do all the manual journal entries. You still have to do all the manual department changes, everything like that. And it gets, you know, it's frustrating because you constantly are working to catch up. Whereas if we moved into NetSuite, we would have that already in there, feeding each other, and you know, it's less work for all of us in accounting. <laughs> Is that something that's on the roadmap for you? Yeah, so next week we are looking into getting into the NetSuite payroll and, and moving forward with all of that and you know, finally putting everything back into one system where we wanted it to be from the beginning. No kidding, that's yeah. great. As far as the, I did want to touch on that, uh, that time off though, because you say you're doing the time tracking as well as the time off. Mm -hmm. Those, uh, is, that's all happening in the employee center, right? Yeah, so we do, we have um, our time off requests, which our employees will put in. There's also an approval process that goes through, but once the time off request is approved, it automatically links to their timesheets. So their, their timesheets are automatically updated and they don't have to worry about, you know, looking at them and making sure that it's on there because it's automatically on there. And it you know, it's it's, makes it easier for our payroll person to extract it and put it into our time off. Into and that's uh, all of the time off accruals are handled automatically, right? Yes. Right? Yep. Right. So it sounds like you both put a tremendous amount of work into this, both in a unique position, what I thought was a unique position beforehand of being both in HR and finance, but it sounds like Jim, you, you quoted me a stat recently, it's like 70% of HR departments. Yeah, so when I was prepping for another session, uh, uh, one of the presenters was doing a CFO Rockstar presentation and he had a stat that said 70% of HR organizations report up through the CFO. That's wild. Yeah. yeah. So you're, you're both in a position to really affect what goes on there downstream. Yeah. So is there any Looking forward, are there any initiatives that you're both interested in, Carrie, just in terms of forwarding your, your HR function? Uh, so right. we decided to hire an HR firm uh, to help us with the job descriptions because NetSuite has this ability to have all the job descriptions uploaded in there you know, and give a progress to every employee of where they're going and where they want to be. Gotcha. Um, so once we get finished the job descriptions, we will bring them all back into NetSuite so we have that information for all our employees which is a great step that we yeah. didn't have before. And that works well with the performance management yes. as well, yes. right? Yes, yes, and it, you know, it definitely, it ties back to your performance metrics, but it also flows into your performance reviews. You know, you want, at the end of the day, at the end of the year, when you're doing your performance review, you want to know exactly what's happened throughout the year, but also where you're going to go the next steps. Great. And Jim, how about yourself looking at the next couple of years? Any uh, HR slash finance initiatives? You're yeah, we actually have a couple going right now. I mean, the first thing we did is we just hired a new chief people officer to sort of really take our people operations group to the whole next level. Great. Um, Dele Shell just joined Final Side on Monday. Um, you know, so that's great. We're really excited to have her on the team. The second thing we've done is we're starting to move to a new NetSuite partner, Everything Benefits, and we're using them to sort of in better integrate with sort of our benefit providers, you know, from a carrier connection perspective, as well as Fidelity and Optum to sort of manage our, both our uh, 401k and uh, HSA accounts. Yeah, and for those who don't know, Everything Benefits is one of our most stellar partners in the HR space because while sweet people 
lets you track benefits from an, like a database standpoint. It doesn't provide the enrollment and the, the carrier connectivity and everything benefits steps in majorly there. Not only does it allow you to do open enrollment and changes, but it's totally baked into the employee center experience. So if you log in, you'll never know that you're interacting with a different piece of software because it is totally NetSuite native. So they, they have been an awesome partner in life. And we're years. very excited about that, not only because of that element where the employee sort of seems, looks at it as a sort of a seamless interaction in terms of doing expense reports or time off requests or looking at their paycheck or doing benefit enrollment, but our benefit administrator internally only has to go into NetSuite. So it's mm. so she's not logging into a separate system. She's also doing everything within NetSuite. So it's really putting everything under one umbrella and really making our lives a lot easier. Great. 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 Well, folks, that's, that's all the questions I had. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. Um, and enjoy the rest of your stay in Las Vegas. Great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for having me, Hassan. Thanks a lot.